Hey guys, I'm Dustin. Welcome back to the second installment of Breaking Into Precision Rifle. Now, if you haven't seen the first one, go back, uh, check out that video and check out my sweet rifle that I got from JP Enterprises. Uh, so at the ending of that uh, video, I talked about we were gonna be going to Vortex. So myself and Sean Nelson, the guy behind the camera, we loaded up, we drove about four and a half hours over to the Vortex headquarters, just in Wisconsin. And we spent the day with Ruben Alexson and Travis Vogel, where they pretty much just set us down. We talked about optics, kind of talked about what I was looking uh, to do with the long range uh, rifle shooting. And then we just did a tour. And let me tell you, that place is amazing. If you've never been there, I definitely put that on a checklist of somehow being able to swing by and get a cool tour. If nothing else, they've got an awesome showroom floor. So go in there, you can buy shirts, hats, hoodies, all that good stuff, and uh, check out all their optics and place your order right there. After the tour, Travis and I went upstairs and we sat down and we had a great conversation about their three primary long range precision rifle optics. All right, Trav, so shot a lot of three gun, but yeah. going into long range. It's a big jump. Yeah, and you know me, I'm completely lost because I always call you when I have optic <laughs> questions. So It does happen. Um, we can get you there. Yeah, so I'm, my main goal is to be like PRS style, NRL okay. style. Yep, so precision rifle is yep. all. Yep, okay. um, I will do a couple of team matches. Next year I would like to shoot the Mammoth, but that is not my primary focus. It's yeah. going to be just yeah. kind of getting out there and shooting. And yep. plus having a 22 trainer rifle. Absolutely. Um, I recently finally bought it. I've got a bolt action left handed 22. I'm mm -hmm. really excited about that. Um, so I, I know where you're coming from on that one. Um, biggest thing comes down to there's so many options, even within the Vortex line. Where do you start? And honestly, the thing that anchors them all together, in my opinion, is the EBR 7C MRED reticle. The reason I say MRED is because all the precision rifle shooters, when they're calling wind, when they're having that conversation, are shooting MRED. Right. It's kind of like um, Android versus Apple, right? If everybody's using Apple, you get to take advantage of all of those, all of those specials and things like mm -hmm. that that only those phones run when used with each other. Right. So speaking the same language is a great thing. Um, some yeah. folks always get kind of weird about MRED though. Um, it's not, it's not uh, metric. It's angular, so it's in the 10 system. I find it easier personally for my brain. Okay, so, so. I'm the guy that's like super weird out about MRAD right yeah. now because yep. it sounds like a lot of math. And I think that's just because a lot of people I've hung out with preached it that way. And in reality, tenths are really easy. You think about dollars and cents all the time, mm -hmm. right? Versus having to think about literally four quarters make one, now you get tenths. Okay. The nice thing about that is you can divide tenths in half visually very easily because that'll allow you to hold a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, you can make those adjustments. You can actually, if you have to mill those targets for distance, you get that much finer granularness to it. Um, one is really not more accurate than the other. Um, the cap capability of the rifle is the same. Right. Um, the rifle is going to be the rifle with the ammo that you're shooting. Got it. Um, so with that being said, the EBR7 comes in a number of different optics at a number of different price points. Um, I say let's start with, for your PRS rifle, um, because you you are going whole hog in this and you're going to make yeah. that big dive, I would strongly recommend the Razor 4.5 to 27. Um, this has been our gold standard for a very long time. I expect to see it do continue the same for quite a, quite a while yet. Mm -hmm. It offers locking zero stop elevation turrets with the ability to have an infinite zero. So that to unlock them, you just pop them up, make your correction, and you can lock it at any point. Um, that is that is the PRS option. It does weigh a little bit, yeah. but the nice thing is, is for your rifle, when you're using it on a barricade or anything like that, a little bit of weight isn't gonna hurt you. All right. um, it comes in at 48 ounces, so right at three pounds. Um, that is definitely the way to go. It's the best optical quality in, in the offerings. It's the best durability. It's built the, built the heaviest. Uh, the turrets are super heavy duty. Track like nobody's business. That's the one thing I love about our scopes is the tracking is, is a non, is just isn't a variable. Mm -hmm. They're all going to be that good. Um, so that's the one I'm going to recommend for your PRS rifle. Those have come down in price recently, so it's a nice thing. They are a little bit more uh, achievable for most folks. And then you're doing a 22, right? Yes. So we recently launched the Strike Eagle 5 to 25. It's one of my favorite optics we make because it effectively is a light version of the 4 to 27. It's a 5 to 25 by 56. It's a locking zero stop turret. It's the same reticle. It is a fantastic optic. The only thing you're really going to give up is some of that massive build quality, but you do gain a little bit lighter scope. 
And you're also then going to gain uh, the opportunity for a little different zero stop, but a zero stop nonetheless. Uh, that's the new rev stop. It's a really easy to set up. Um, we can show you that later too. Yeah. So we'll go through that one. But uh, Now this I, one also, the uh, it, it, it goes down to... It parallax is extremely low, down to, to 15, 15 yards. Yep. Which is what I'm seeing a lot of 22 matches are... Yep, it's one of those things that. that a lot of folks have wanted in the in the 22 side of things, in the rimfire side. Um, it is in a fantastic optic, and the best part is, is price point wise, it comes in uh, significantly nicer. It's a six ninety nine optic um, right now, so it is that great trainer option. One of the guys that I was in my squad shot it at Mammoth, and he actually won the Atlas uh, Sure Shot Challenge. Oh, okay. The B and T Challenge. Yeah. Um, he won it for his for our well, for everybody in secondary yeah. shooters. So. And he ran this guy. Yep, ran that guy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, tracks like nobody's business. Um, it's a really good option. I did skip the PST, um, mainly for the fact that in your, on your trainer rifle or on just rifles in general, um, this one doesn't have quite the optical quality, but some of the features are a little nicer. Um, the zero stop is a little bit nicer, but the optical quality on the PST still still shines above. So if you did want to do that, the other thing is, is that parallax being so low on this kind of right. alleviated that versus going down to... So point. some of my battle there is glass over parallax. Yeah, that's, that's really... Which, which, which one do I want? Yeah, and honestly, with you shooting those shorter ranges, that Strike Eagle um, is going to be a little more ideal because the 25-yard parallax is great, but we're starting to see some really short targets mm -hmm. in those games and not even starting to. They've been happening for a long time, right. but... Um, it's one of those things. And then with you pushing out to 400, it's kind of crazy because you're pigeonholing one versus the other, but they both will do the job, either of the jobs, really, really well. So it's a, it's a really, it's a tough one, but uh, when you're buying two optics, you know, getting, getting so much value out of this one is it's really hard to beat. Yeah. No, this one, this one looks just like a little mini-me Yeah. Of this guy, and it's um, kind of cool. Yeah, actually, one of, our, one of my friends picked this up um, when I had it on my 22, and he's like, where'd you get a black razor? <laughs> um, I can and, see that. And so uh, I told him what it was, and he looked through it and was extremely impressed. So it's a pretty wild option. But, um, again, there's so much in our line to be able to pick that reticle mm -hmm. and then see what fits your price point or the job that it's doing. Because there are those little tiny yes or no's, um, be it parallax, you know, be it right. be it optical quality, all those things that give you that ability to say, once we've narrowed it tremendously by mm -hmm. using the reticle, then we can really find that ideal optic for okay. us. Okay. Yeah. See, and I was curious if I, you know, in my head it was reticle or not reticle, it was optic. Mm -hmm. Then you choose your reticle. And but you're kind of going, you know, figure out the reticle that mm -hmm. you like, try to base everything off that, plus the yeah. style of shooting you're doing, yep. and then pick. And that's what the ABR7 was created for was that that precision rifle, that that action action precision, if you will, side of, right. of this game. Um, and that's what's really actually drawn me to it personally from say three gun is I love 3-Gun, always will, but yeah. there's something very cool about running this game and really having that fight with yourself. Um, not really a golfer. There's a lot of folks that are. Yeah. But I like this as that same type of self-battle, if you will. I think that's where I'm at was, you know, uh, and, and, you know, I've talked about this in a previous video was I, I, I always love 3-Gun. Yeah. But there comes a point where I'm kind of burned out. Yep. with three gun but i also want this completely different challenge and my wife shoots more long range mm -hmm. than she'll ever shoot three gun and to be able to get out there and shoot with her and be able to have that conversation mm -hmm. and she understands mill yep. and i don't want to be on moa and we're out there trying to train with no. each other because then i'm going to get confused because yeah. she's way smarter than me so <laughs> yeah there's a lot of things about it too that are it's a different game but everyone that we find cross trains in different ways right a lot of guys will physically cross train well, this is shooting discipline cross-training, mm -hmm. you know, building positions, things like that that are extremely valuable to the shooter as a whole are now accessible and highly trainable in something that we don't do a lot in three gun per se, right? right. Um, and a lot of the, what's cool is a lot of the sniper matches and things like that will have a pistol element. So you'll go into it feeling pretty good there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that ability to do so many different things, it's like, I don't ever know a shooter who's one channel all the time. There are some guys, and they're the, definitely the guys at the top of the game. Right. But, you know, even when we go out to shoot for fun, we pick something that's even slightly different. So exactly, just, yeah. So I know you talked about the uh, EVRC, mm -hmm. that's our 7 yep. uh, What other reticles do you offer through lines? And do, you know, like, do you only offer certain reticles in yeah. the Razor line, and then yep. they kind of drop off? Yep, on the Razor line, we, uh, we offer a H59 Horus and a Tremor 3. 
those are only available in the Razor series. Okay. Um, there's a premium to those reticles, and that's just a licensure thing um, for us to use them. There are a lot of folks who are trained on those reticles. I think they're fantastic. If you're trained on them, mm -hmm. pick one up. Right. If you're looking to get into the game and use a reticle that has all the tools you need but isn't so full that you have too many questions um, or isn't quite as quick to pick up that functional, right. that functional knowledge, uh, the EBR7C is as complete as I would want. There's some things that other folks are still feeling like they're left out on. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those complete things that, you know, like a Tremor H59 does. Um, but I don't ever feel outgunned or out, out, set, out skill setted or out tooled right. with a EBR 7C. So for somebody that's new to the game like myself, yeah. this is going to be the perfect optic for me to get into, yep. have exactly what I need, yep. and then still have some room to grow exactly. before I get to a point where I'm like, hey, I might need to change exactly. to a horse or the Tremor 3 to add in the and, other availables if I ever well, even get exactly, to Exactly, that and that's a very specific niche kind of fill. Got it. But at the same time, What's so cool about it is, this is going to start out a little bit more than you probably Can are comfortable with. Think? And, and yeah, I do, <laughs> I really do. But at the same time, that's a way better alternative to make sure that you, you can grow into it. Right. Because, you know, heck, we can always teach that next step, right? You can always learn that next step. You have Laura, we, we, there's a lot of folks out there to do a lot of training. Um, you can you can ask those questions and really start to see oh hey this is why this has value right. or this is why this line is here at that at this um, offset or this this interval right mm -hmm. um, all of the horizontal stadias are two tenths mil which is really nice okay um, and then you go out to actually finer beyond uh, four mil I believe yes yeah, I was um, looking at something on there but uh, that's just you know that's that's tools that have been requested and this this reticle has actually been updated and requested by the requests that our shooters have had to continue to mold it and make it as effective as humanly possible. Yeah. Now this this reticle I can find it like with in my my Straylog Pro or all mm -hmm. that stuff. So yep. I can build it out in a ballistics app. Yep. And then you guys yep. just came out with uh, some something like a ballistics app. Right? Yeah, we uh, we have a partner app for our ballistic furies, which are running AB Pro. Mm -hmm. Sorry, AB Elite. Okay. Um, so the solver is actually on board to the fury itself. So the phone app is a import system for putting in all of your ballistics and in your the round you're shooting and the velocity and all of those details. But the solver is actually on board on the unit, oh, that's cool. which is really nice because then you have all your atmospherics yeah, as well. Right. And so it's one handheld unit to get you solutions as well as uh, as well as all your weather and all your actual. Oh yeah, and it's so. just all right there. In one. Oh, that's yeah. super cool. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that one's a new one for uh, about week ago so yeah <laughs> pretty, pretty excited about it i'm um, pretty excited about that one that one's been a lot of fun to use um super easy to use um it's just really good yeah cool but awesome well i appreciate it heck yeah anything else you we want to do let, let us know you know we're always here yeah info at vortex optics and has questions on any of the new products we're always happy to help so yeah no and i think uh you know we're going to be letting people know if they have any questions mm -hmm. post them down below yep. then i'll be reaching out to you guys yeah. to try to help answer those questions absolutely and i'm happy to yeah i mean you guys have a great team here right? any Thank time you. i've called we try over really here, hard to be I, as helpful as possible yeah no really good so awesome well i've enjoyed the tour and i kind of want to finish the tour as well so i'm looking forward to it yeah let's good. get back to that absolutely cool all right guys so an eight hour day at vortex is just so much uh content to film and there's a whole lot to put into one video. So we broke this video up into two segments. So the next segment is gonna be where I joined Travis in the Vortex Edge facility. The, it's a phenomenal training range they have there. And we start to break down the tripods, uh, the different heads that they have on tripods, accessories that can be added to your binoculars as well as your spotting scope. And just kind of talk to Travis about shooting and long range, shooting long range in general. So stay tuned.